This is the Castle Concept PowerPoint version of a tract for children by Ron Solomon of Caraway Street Ministries. We invite you to get a copy of this tract and also this PowerPoint slideshow will demonstrate the basic message of salvation and living the abundant life in Jesus Christ as related at a child's level. We begin by talking about a castle. We ask the child, when you envision a castle, what comes to mind? Have you seen a castle before? It may have a flag on top. It's a big stone building. Maybe it has a moat around it, some land and trees. Perhaps it's a royal castle that has a king or queen living there, or maybe knights in their armor that go riding out on their horses to do missions for the owner of the castle to the countryside roundabout. But for our purposes, we're going to let this castle also symbolize the human body. You see, we live in a human body. That's the outside part of us that everyone can see. But we're more than the outside part. We also have a soul and a spirit inside. But here we will identify the castle as representing my body. We'll open the door to this castle and look in and see that there's two rooms. On the right, there is a throne room. And on the left, there is a soldier's quarters room. We'll let this represent how we have an inner part of us that we can't touch, taste, or feel, but it's just as real and even as more so than the outward part of us. And the throne room represents our human spirit that's designed to relate to God. The soldier's quarters on the left represents the human soul. We see in the throne room that it's called the throne room because whoever resides in the throne room rules the castle, is identified as the king of that castle, and the soldiers of thinker, chooser, feeler are responsible to cooperate, respect, and obey the king of the castle. This represents the person who is not yet born again by the Spirit of God. This child is unsaved. So we'll say that my body is the outward part, but inside there is the spirit and the soul. So on the right, the old me represents the old person, the spirit that's separated from the life of God. The Bible says in Ephesians 2.1 that we were born dead in trespasses and sins. And in Romans 6.6 6, it says that who we were before salvation is the old person, the old man. So here, in the unsafe condition, the old me is the king of the castle. And so, what's happening in the soldier's quarters? Well, thinker is thinking thoughts that are self-centered, and chooser is choosing thoughts that are independent and self-centered, and feeler feels the emotions that go along with that, whether it might be fear or anger or guilt or sadness, whatever those emotions may be. So the soldier's quarter represents the human soul. The human soul has mind, will, and emotions. So we're going to let the mind be called thinker, and we're going to let the human will be called chooser, and we're going to let the faculty of emotions be called feeler. So mind, will, and emotions are called thinker, chooser, feeler. And here, before the person is saved, the old me is on the throne, and so the thoughts are going to not line up with the ultimate king's thoughts. Uh, the choices will be often sinful and not in alignment with the ultimate king's will of loving God and loving others as we love ourselves. And feeler is going to feel all kinds of conflicted emotions. And the missions that these soldiers go on to outside the castle will cause much trouble as others come into conflict with what the old me wants to say, do, and react. Now we need to discover how we can have a new king in this castle, and that's through the plan of salvation. One way of describing how to know the ultimate king of kings and receive Jesus as our savior is the 
uh, model here in this card, the ABCs of salvation. And here we're going to start with C and then B and then A. C represents confess. Confess you are a sinner. Tell God that you have done God a different way than His. You have sinned. And only those we let only those things we let Jesus do with our life are good enough to please Him and His Father God. Also, let God know that you are very sorry for not doing the things His perfect way. God and Jesus have never done a bad thing in their lives. Say, I don't want to do those selfish things again. I want to go God's way. Then thank God for forgetting you ever, you, you ever sinned. He doesn't hold sins against you anymore. B stands for believe. Believe that Jesus died on the cross to forgive you for the sins you have done. Believe also that Jesus came back to life three days later. He beat death and lives today. And believe that your old me, Romans 6, 6, died with Jesus on the cross. The old me is the thing inside someone who doesn't have Jesus, and it forces them to go against God's way. And then A, ask Jesus to come into your life and control your thinker, chooser, feeler, and body. Let him be boss to do whatever he wants to do with your life. Once you have asked, Jesus will come in, sit on your throne, and promises to never leave. Joshua 1.5 We now have Jesus' goodness and love inside us and his power to stop us from going the wrong way. No matter how hard we try, we cannot please God by doing things in our own strength. Jesus wants to give us his goodness, so just let him. Every part of the day, his way is best. When we receive Jesus Christ as our Savior, he becomes the king of this castle. John 1.12 says, As many as received him, meaning Jesus, to them God gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. So, when we repent of our sins and believe that Jesus died for us on the cross and rose again, and we, by faith, receive him as our Savior and Lord, God says our spirit is made alive unto God. The Spirit of God comes into us, and now we have a new identity. Notice our new identity is that we are a temple of God. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Not only do we have a new identity and a new life source in us, God's Spirit, we have a new king, in our castle, King Jesus, but also we have a new potential. King Jesus wants to live his life in us and through us, and so the soldiers need to march in fellowship with and in obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ. So now thinker is renewed to think thoughts that are true and biblical and honest, and the Bible is our ultimate source book for this. The Bible says God's word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. As Jesus lives through us, then chooser needs to choose what is God's will, to love God with all our heart, to love our neighbor as ourself, and we obey out of a sense of love and gratitude to God for his goodness. And then feeler, as we think truth and as we choose to do what is loving, then feeler is going to feel joy and peace and courage and hope not that Feeler never has sad feelings, but now Feeler is going to have a joy no matter what's going on outside the castle. In this stage of the presentation, we see that there is a problem that frequently occurs in our lives as Christians, and that is that we can close the door of fellowship. So notice between uh, the spirit and the soul, which we're calling here the throne room and the soldier's quarters, the door is closed and the doorknob is on the side of chooser. And chooser has allowed the door to close and the fellowship with King Jesus has been hindered. Now aren't you glad that Jesus will never leave us or forsake us? And we're encouraged that we are still secure in our good identity as children of God and here as the temple of God. However, the Bible warns us, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, 
by whom you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Ephesians 4, verse 30. And in 1 Thessalonians 5, we are told not to quench the Spirit, as God's Spirit wants to do good, loving things through us. But here we see the believer has closed the door of fellowship and is hindering King Jesus from expressing his life through thinker, chooser, feeler. And so that's why it's a darkened area. We are not walking in the light. And so now thinker starts to revert back to fleshly ways of thinking, and chooser starts to, to act independently and in being selfish and, and uh, not obedient. And feeler starts to feel the, the fear and the guilt and the shame and the negative emotions more and more. So rather than trying to help the child just fix their feeler or their chooser or their thinker, we see that we do not have to walk according to the flesh. We don't have to live in the shadow of the self-life. We can recognize that we are a royal castle. We are the temple of God. King Jesus does live in us, and his way is best. And we need to repent and say, Lord Jesus, take control. I trust you to live your life in me and through me today. Here we have the description of someone who once again yields to God and trusts Christ to live through him. The door of fellowship has been opened, which symbolizes yielding to the Holy Spirit and trusting King Jesus to live his life in us and through us instead of us. In Revelation 3.20, the Bible teaches, and Jesus is speaking to believers, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and dine with him and he with me. So as we open the door of fellowship, we see that King Jesus guides thinker to think what is true and biblical, not conforming to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, Romans 12, 2. And also, as King Jesus lives through, her, through us, then chooser is going to choose to do what is loving and good and righteous, because King Jesus is a righteous, good, and loving king. And feeler is going to feel the emotions of joy and peace, hope and courage because of the awareness that my God shall meet all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, Philippians 4.19. So friends, let us live with the awareness that Christ in us is the hope of glory, Colossians 1.27, that we are a temple of God as true believers, 1 Corinthians 6, 19. And that as we yield to the Lord, we can be filled with the Spirit of King Jesus in our lives. Ephesians 5, 18. Do not be drunk with wine, which is dissipation, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. We can invite King Jesus to live through us, that we may think what is true and righteous, that we may choose what is good and loving, that we may feel and experience emotionally the joy and the positive emotions of God's presence in our lives. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life. That comes when he enters into our throne room and we are born again and receive eternal life. But he also says, I've come that you might have life more abundantly. And that abundant life occurs as we open the door of fellowship and allow King Jesus to live his life in us and through us one day at a time. This description parallels Galatians 2.20, which says, I have been crucified with Christ. Remember, the old me is no longer there, right? It goes on to say, Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but King Jesus, right, lives in me. So the life which I now live in the flesh, that I live in this castle, I live by faith, by dependence upon the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And by faith I trust him to renew my mind, guide my will, and heal damaged emotions. That the missions that the soldiers go on that proceeds from this castle will honor the King of Kings, do good to a hurting world, and present the good news of salvation for whosoever will may come and drink of the water of life freely. We invite you to learn more about Christ-centered discipleship 
through visiting carewayst.com for children's ministry or gracefellowshipinternational.com where we have biblical counseling and training materials available to equip you to share the gospel of salvation and abundant living for adults and to children.